Yeah, like I, I find when I play a lot, my, my right lat gets gets sore from just ripping through. And I'm, I'm ripping my front shoulder out a lot too. Do you, let me see, do you have a right lat? I don't see it. <laughs> don't see, sorry, sorry, my bad, bad joke. All right, out here with Mr. Mickelson here. Uh, Phil, what's your, what's your experience playing right-handed? When I started playing, I felt the game was a little too easy righty and I wanted to make it more challenging, so I started playing left-handed. And it's fun for me now to go back and, and to see just how easy the game is right-handed and, and how much easier it could have been had I stayed right-handed. That's actually the same reason I'm, I've been going lefty for the last eight, nine months. And, uh, you know, I found that the game just wasn't, wasn't challenging enough right-handed, so. I understand, and so now this brings a whole different dimension. Yeah, what's your right-handed experience? I mean, not, so, not, not a whole lot. So I'm right-handed in everything else I do, yeah. so it's very easy for me to play golf left-handed and chip because my right hand is dominant and it just leads the shot. But when you're a right-handed golfer and that right hand is flipping it over, I think it's very difficult to control the club. I actually think it's easier to play golf left-handed if you are right-handed and everything else. Like playing backhanded tennis, especially short game where you're creating a slice backhand, it's much easier to chip when your dominant hand is leading the, leading the stroke rather than always trying to, to roll it over. So uh, I, I actually think it's easier. This will be, be a good challenge for me uh, to, to go back and see. Oh, I can swing righty. All right, let's see. Why don't you lead it away? Yeah, I'll lead it off. All right, we got, what was it here? 90 yards. 90 yards. All right. 87 is dialed. Well, I'm dialed. Yeah, good shot. All right. Take that. Okay. So I'm going to go with a little more club because I'm going to try to control my spin. I really don't want it backing up that much. So I can take a little bit shorter backswing and kind of accelerate through and, and not, uh, not spin it too much. Although I don't want to get too technical. You were sandbagging in the warm-up. You're darn right I was. <laughs> <laughs> Is he on the green though? He's not on the green? Oh, I'll give it to you. I'll spot you one. All right, you all right, all right. All good. Uh, all right, we got what, 128 here? I probably should have cut that, huh? Maybe yeah, instead of yeah. draw like that. I got pitching wedge. Ah. God, door's wide open. It is. <laughs> it doesn't mean I can fit through it. I'm gonna go a little pitching wedge too. Ball seems to be jumping off the face right now. Get up. Wow. Did you get on top of the tier? Ah, uh, it's a little short. All right. I shortened the backswing a little too much there. Phil, who's the who's the best best player on tour with their opposite hand? You think? Uh, I I've seen VJ do remarkable things left-handed. Early in my career in the 90s, we were playing the Dunlop Phoenix Tournament last hole was a par five, and he hit a beautiful drive left-handed. He took my set, left-handed draw on the fairway, left-handed draw three went onto the green, and I could barely reach this hole. He hit it as pristine as you could. Uh, obviously, you have Mac O'Grady, and then there's a guy, Johnny Bulla, okay. used to fly Ben Hogan around in a DC-3 back in the day, and he could he would play Orange Tree at Scottsdale and would shoot, shot 65 in the morning right hand and 63 left hand in the afternoon. I mean, that would be the gold standard, I would think. Everybody asks what, what my goal is. My goal is to break 80 in the same day from both sides of the ball. Yeah, that'd be impressive. So, we'll see. I'm Even if you did that righty, I'd be impressed. <laughs> Sorry. Now, are you going to try to fly it up on top and check it, or are you going to kind of scoot it up? Uh, I'm, I'm going to do that little one, one yeah, hop and stop. Same here. Kind of same thing, here. So. So it flew a little long. It's a on the green. Long. It's on the green though. Is it though? Is that on the green? Oh, it just crept off. On the green. It's on. Oh, good shot, good shot. All Pressure's right. on, all right. The thing is though, is if I leave it underneath the tier, I'll be closer, because your ball kind of ran away, unfortunately. So I'm, I, I don't want to fly mine up top. I'm just going to kind of fly it on. If I hit a good shot, just fly it on and just let it barely get up the tier or even stay below it. Just like that. <laughs> yeah. 
God. All right, well, you know what? I got some work to do. So I, I never have played a full round of golf right-handed, but I hit the ball in the crap so many times a year that I have probably a dozen right-handed swings. And there's two things that I found that help me. One is I don't want to go too long because I lose face awareness. All I want to do is return the face to square. And so I try to keep it a little bit shorter backswing. And two is the shoulder usually doesn't turn. Like usually it kind of, the shoulder almost like picks the club up when I go righty. And so I have to make sure that my first move is kind of turning the shoulders more level, which takes a lot of the hand action out. So if I can kind of lock in the wrist, just turn the shoulders and keep it short, I can usually make solid contact. Where you could have beaten me is if we went to the longer stuff like driver, but that wasn't the challenge. Exactly. That's not what we were competing with. I gotta, I gotta talk to my producers. Yeah, yeah. and that's your fault. <laughs> that's your fault that you didn't scan that, scope that out, find out my weakness and, and take advantage of it. Phil. Very nice to meet you. Yeah, you too.